Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. So I'm giving you an update on the Thinkware Q800 Pro dash cam. I installed and reviewed this back in March. So this is a little over six months I've been using this and we've been out doing a lot of traveling the last month or so. So it's gotten a lot of, a lot of use actually driving around with the RV and everything. So I thought it'd be a good time to uh, come back and let you know how I like it. Now I've used several dash cams over the years. I've always liked to have a dash cam just in case we, we get in an accident or anything or someone's messing about with the rig to have some video footage. Also I use the, the videos in in my video clips in my YouTube videos. It's kind of neat to have the, the footage or if I see anything cool on the road it's neat to have the footage. Now I started out with a Garmin uh, maybe five or six years ago and then I switched to an Acaso, which I really liked. And I've tried what's called the Yomice or Jomice. I didn't really like those too much. And this company called Thinkware got a hold of me and asked me if I'd like to uh, check theirs out. Now this is a pretty expensive one as they go. Most of the, the dash cams are in the $100 range. This is a $200 unit, but it has quite a few fancy features, which I went through in, in my review videos. I did two videos on it. Mainly the the interesting features are it has a, a parking mode um, so that uh, you when you turn your truck off um, it goes into kind of a it doesn't go to sleep but it actually monitors the vehicle and if there's any motion around the vehicle or if someone hits the vehicle and sets off the g-force sensor it'll actually come on and, and record footage um, you can have that in in video footage or something called time-lapse. So as I've used it, I've kind of liked the time-lapse video myself. Um, it comes on and does like two frames a second or something like that, which saves memory um, on the, the card itself. The, the, it stores on a little SD, micro SD card. So kind of like that, but you can get some pretty good uh, still frames of people or, or cars or whatever is happening if you take it onto your computer and check it out that way. The other thing it has is the cloud feature. Um, you need to use a, a, a special hotspot. You, you can hotspot a phone or use a hotspot in the vehicle. Then you can remote look at things, but I think that's more for like fleets or businesses. Um, I tested it out in my review and it worked, but I haven't used it at all. Uh, the other thing it has is uh, voice stuff. Um, it'll come on and talk to you and, and things like that, but I didn't really I turned that off pretty Pretty quickly because watch when I turn it on You'll see how annoying it is this voice always comes on every time you turn the truck on It comes out of parking mode and then it's going to go through and tell you That it's switched to continuous mode and the GPS has been connected and you can continuous see the lights Yeah will now start. So she always, yeah, it does it every time. So I go into the settings and actually turn that sound off. Um, so it records video footage while you're driving. So continuously in one minute segments. Um, it's not a 4K camera. It's called a 2K, which is pretty good resolution, nice and clear. Um, I find I, I kind of like that because the file sizes aren't so huge like 4K. And I find most of the 4K, because of the tiny lenses on these dash cams, the 4K footage on, on the dash cams they call 4K isn't that great anyway. So I really like the, the, the footage that comes out of this. Um, sharp enough, but also has very good um, color balance to it and contrast. And it really handles uh, different exposures really well. I'll give you a little bit of footage as I'm going through some trees here in the fall. And that's pretty hard for a camera because you have a lot of bright spots and dark spots. So it's got to it's got to have what they call exposure, a wide dynamic range to its exposure to really uh, deal with that. And I find this one deals with it really well. <clears throat> also, I got this one for free for the review, but I also, with my own money, I went and bought there's an optional rear uh, camera that plugs into this. Um, you can see two wires going into this. One is the the power and then one is the rear camera and then I stuck that on the rear window of the truck. So now I have a front view and a back view of what's going on and it's recording both of those at the same time. So 
there's any any type of accident you can you can take the footage of what was happening behind you and you know what was happening in front of you and you'd have that uh the only thing i found that uh, any problem i've had with it was uh i was using a, an sd card um and for some reason something was funny with that sd card and I, the thing kept shutting down every like minute or two and rebooting and I thought, oh, I got a bad camera, but it actually turned out to be a, a bad micro SD card. So what I've done is I've found that uh, I think it's SanDisk 128 gigabyte works pretty good. And I have their SanDisk 128 gigabyte micro SD card and one meant for dash cams so that there's a, it can continuously write over itself all the time. It's kind of meant for uh, extended use. So I got that for it and it's been fine since then and I've really liked the mount some of the mount by suction cup this one has a bracket that gets 3m taped on your windshield and then it just slides off like that which is really nice and I've mounted it right in front of my mirror so it's not blocking me at all as far as uh, the driver view and it's got a good view up ahead Let's see there so when I want to pull this off to look at footage I can just quickly pull that off and then put it back in place and then plug the two wires in so I really like that for for quickly pulling the, the card out here's a closer look at the camera itself it's got this a barrel on the end that adjusts it can turn and you can adjust your view and there's where the little micro SD card goes in so when I want to look at the footage on the computer, I just pop that out there and put it in a card reader and I can read the footage. And then it has some buttons here um, for uh, turning audio recording quickly on or off. Um, it will record the audio in the, in the cab um, while it's going, so I usually leave that on. But there's some cases you might want to have that off so, you know, someone can't hear get the card and hear your conversations <laughs> what's going on there's a format button and a wi-fi button it has an app for the phone so you can get in there and do the settings and you can actually view things on the on the phone through wi-fi and it works pretty good and there's a power on off and then this silver button here is if you want to manually record something um, you can just push that and some led indicators so pretty nice and small um, like I say, this is one of the more expensive dash cams on the market, but uh, it does seem to be really well built, works really well. Um, some people complained about dash cams in hot weather. Um, I can't speak too much for that because I don't really spend summers in hot weather, but it did get this, this summer up to around 100, 100 degrees or so in uh, BC here, and it, I didn't have any problems with it. And I also used it... Uh, in March and that and then in the fall here it's been fair getting down near zero and a lot of humidity hasn't had any problems hasn't fogged up or anything like that so been happy with it that way and here's a look at the rear camera that just gets sticky mounted with 3m onto the back of the window shoots up the back and gives a nice back view so I ran the wires in the headliner along the headliner and to the front and along this headliner and down and plug it into the back of the, the front camera and the front camera's power ran the headliner and then down and around and what I did is I hit everything nicely so I pulled my dash apart and uh, they do have a thing to plug into like a, a power 12 volt cigarette lighter power socket but I decided to hardwire uh, mine did come with a hardwire kit that's an optional thing and uh, so I hardwired it right in um, so it has constant 12 volt power all the time even when I turn the key off and what where I got that power on the back of this radio there's a memory wire so I went in there and and connected the dash cams constant 12 volt power to that and then it's not constant 12 volt power I connected to the, the cigarette lighter socket. So it's pretty easy wiring. Now when I turn the key off, then it goes into parking mode. And there's a, a setting in the dash cam um, that the parking mode will last for you. I have it set for 48 hours. 
So if I don't use the chuck for more than 48 hours, then it's going to automatically turn off and not drain any more power. Um, it also has a, uh, tw a voltage setting. So I have it set for 12.1 uh, volts. So if my chuck's batteries come down to 12.1 volts, then automatically it won't, won't go into that, that uh, parking mode anymore. Just, just so you don't end up with a dead battery. And like I say, so far I've had this for six months or so and I haven't had any, hasn't showed any indication of running down my batteries or anything like that. So you just saw that go off. So now parking mode should turn on. She'll come on and tell me that parking mode is on. Parking recording will now start. Thank you, ma'am. So you can see how she can get pretty annoying. So like I say, I go into the, the settings and using the, the Wi-Fi connection through the phone, I just turn the sound right off, which is kind of a risk because I won't know if it actually turns on properly because these little LEDs tell you, but they're kind of hard for me to see, especially when it's bright out. I can't really always see, but so far it hasn't been any problems. It hasn't not started up ever. Yeah, so to shut her up, I just go in this volume and go to zero, and then she doesn't talk to me anymore. <laughs> uh, there is some road safety settings, and I've... Oops, road safety settings. I have most of them set to off. I just have the um, lane departure, and I have it set for 40 miles an hour, so it kind of helps you on the highway. If you uh, if you get out of your lane, it'll kind of make a click click noise, kind of warning you that you're you're you've left your lane. But everything else, I don't really uh, do too much. There's forward collision warning, low speed forward collision warning, I guess, front vehicle departure warning. But they kind of make little beeping noises, and I don't really find I I need them. Like I'm a good driver. I don't <laughs> really need all these kind of warnings and I find the warning is not really going to be quick enough to avoid an accident anyway so I just have them off because they're just kind of annoying. So there you go as promised an update after using it for six months. Uh, if you want to take a deep dive into all the features and stuff I'll link back in the description uh, to my original review. I did two pretty long videos on it part one there when I went through all the features and part two kind of review with pros and cons and uh, lots of uh, information on the dash cam itself. So I'll link back to that. Um, I hope you found this useful and uh, maybe finish off the, the video with some uh, more footage coming out of the dash cam. I have some uh, footage of uh, us uh, driving along in kind of like a, a rainy day. So it kind of shows how the dash cam is able to cope with, uh, like I say, the different lighting conditions. Till next time, Ray from loveyourv.com. Cheers, folks. Scotland has a lot of traffic circles <laughs> coming in and out of Glasgow, but they were big. Yeah. And they all had five or six exits. Yeah. And all you know, and then they would go on to other major highways. So not only were they big, but people were going from major highway to another major highway, so people were going pretty fast. That was the really unnerving part when I first picked up my car. Because I, when I per first picked up my car, I had to leave Glasgow. And on a major highway with people going fast, driving on the opposite side with all of these circles. And Scotland has a lot of traffic circles <laughs> coming in and out of Glasgow. But they were big. Yeah. And they all had five or six exits. Yeah. And, all, you know, and then they would go on to other major highways. So not only were they big, but people were going from major highway to another major highway, so people were going pretty fast. That was the really unnerving part when I first picked up my car. Because I, when I per first picked up my car, I had to leave Glasgow. And on a major highway with people going fast, driving on the opposite side with all of these circles.